All right, it's time to go talk. Uh, my name's Kevin, and today I am joined with um, Andy Oaken. Say hi, Andy. Hello. Andy is the president of the American Go Association, and um, we're going to just talk about wonderful topics in Go. So, and you're playing black, right, Andy? Uh, that's right. That I am. So you have the first move. Uh, and off we go. <laughs> off we go. So um, let's get started with uh, just talking about maybe how you started playing Go and I guess when that was. That was uh, 2002. I, I learned the rules earlier at a certain point, but it never the game didn't take to me um, or I didn't take to the game. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I've always been a game player, liked a lot of different games. I was never able to be good at chess. I quite liked Shogi for a while, mm -hmm. um, but it was hard to find people to teach me and to play with. Um, and uh, I wanted to have a game to teach my kids, and chess mm. wasn't going well with it. Right. We were already kind of worked through Nine's, Nine Men's Morris, um, which was a very simple game. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> And uh, my daughter and I, she was eight, we were walking through a mall and I saw the uh, Go box in, the, uh, in a game store. Um, so I bought it on the off chance. I remembered hearing that the rules were pretty simple and wasn't hard to learn. <laughs> she and I sat down at a small board and started to play and enjoyed it. And we played together off and on for about a month. Um, at the end of which, you know, she was eight. Mm -hmm. Her interest traveled to other things. Um, and I was hooked. Oh, wow. And uh, I started playing, and then I started playing online, and I started going to the, the local club. And um, at a certain point, um, I decided I didn't want to have another hobby I did poorly, because uh, I had a lot of hobbies. <laughs> uh, and um, that if I was going to do it, I was going to go go in whole hog. Right. And uh, so I looked around for tournaments to play in and looked around for a teacher and um, uh, went at it. Yeah. And at a certain point, I found that it was very hard to find tournaments to play in because there weren't a lot in L.A. Really? In L.A.? Because there's a yeah, there's lot of players. Um, and there's you know huge immigrant community with a lot of clubs. Mm -hmm. Um no, there was one tournament a year, the Coatsen. Uh, right. And so um, after a few years, you know, I traveled around a bit. I went up to San Francisco and played and during a business trip played in a, uh, a tournament in New Jersey. Um, I decided to try and organize one in Los Angeles, the Santa Monica Coffee Cup. I so, see. I and see. Um, got more into organizing then. Oh, cool. That was how, how I got into the, the organizing half of it as well. Um, and uh, I made reasonable progress, got up to one Donna AGA mm -hmm. um, before uh, Go Organizing stopped my progress. <laughs> By the way, I have no idea what to play here. I feel like 017 was a mistake already, so that's why I'm pausing right now for video. Yeah, like no it. problem. <laughs> I'm I'm intently listening, but I'm also like, how did I get into this mess with a big stone? <clears throat> so you started, I guess, relatively recently. I mean, I I understand that recently, within the last ten years, isn't isn't like it's still it's, a while back. But yeah, uh, yeah, but I didn't start playing as a kid, um, and I didn't start playing as a young adult. Um, so it does feel recent. Mm -hmm. uh, it's funny when uh, when I'm talking to people, especially people from Asia, there is a, uh, uh, an age double standard I, I benefit from. <laughs> My having gotten to one done in, in, in 10 years is terribly impressive to people who, if they heard that a 14-year-old you know, was one done, would write them off. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I've had that issue where um, I've had... People, when I talk to Chinese people and I say, oh, I play Go, the first thing they ask is, what Don are you? Right. <laughs> and I say, and then back when I was a Q, that was the strangest feeling. I was like, oh, 
I'm I'm not there yet. <laughs> um, Apparently, uh, in um, uh, someone told me that in in Korea, uh, most people don't say they do something unless they do it at a very high standard. Um, they're less prone to taking up a lot of hobbies as adults than Americans are, uh, which leads to embarrassment um, when there are. You know, when somebody goes on a business trip and they're asked, do you play tennis? And, you know, oh. someone will, in America, will cheerfully say, I play tennis, who's been playing for three months. Mm -hmm. joined, joined a local club, took some lessons, and can bat it back over the net. Right. <laughs> oh, that's a very interesting. And, and yeah. you know, I play tennis is something you say when you were on your college team in Korea or something like that. That's pretty interesting. That definitely highlights a different attitude towards maybe the game or just... Yeah. In general, I, I, I played in an amateur tournament in Korea, um, the Kim In Senior Cup, and the vast majority of the players were four and five don amateur. Wow. Um, and uh, I think it is that they 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 all will have started young. Mm. Um, so I guess. So we pro so we probably started at the same time. I started around 2002 as well. Mm -hmm. I started as a result. I saw as a sort of a. Can you hold on one moment? Oh. Oh. Okay, <laughs> never mind. A, a neighbor's dog was y yipping uh, at the mailman, and I wanted to see if I needed to rescue him. Oh, <laughs> seems it's fine. fine. It's good <laughs> background noise. Yeah, but uh, but I guess we I started as a result of the. Um, Mm -hmm. of the Hikaru no Go craze, not right. directly because of it, but definitely it was because of Hikaru no Go that I at least first began to know about um, mm -hmm. Go. And I guess you did too. And it's interesting to see, I mean, I I have books from like the AGA where the e not the e-journal, the regu actual journals where mm -hmm. a long, long time ago they would have uh, the actual addresses of people who played Go in, in them. And it's... So you could knock on their door. Knock on their door, <laughs> call them, and say, hey, you know, you play Go, I play Go too. And it's interesting to see how it's changed since then. Uh, it's changed a tremendous amount. And um, I think the change was already, you know, well in, in, in place when we started playing. Um, but... Uh, you know the organization a little bit is organized around the the the, the prior vision. Um, if you look back at 1950 or 1960 or 1970, um, if you wanted to play Go, right, at all, um, you had to be physically in a room with a go board and another person who knew how to play, or you could teach them how to play. Right. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> you did that, or you were not playing go. I mean, there was mail correspondence go. You would mail back and forth, uh, uh, you know, your your moves. Right. Just sl slow. <laughs> again, you need to find a person who's going to do this with you. Right. Um. Uh, if you wanted to learn more about it, if you wanted to get better than the person who was in your town and could play, mm. you had to be physically in the room with a book right, and exactly. be able to read it. And there were books in Japanese and Chinese and Korean, mostly in, in Japanese that were, you know, known to the uh, Americans, mm -hmm. or get someone to translate a, uh, the, the book for you. Right. So the, the AGA Journal and... Um, uh, you know, the AGA as a male organization in the sense of postal, right. uh, you know, existence, um, was the clearinghouse for the information, there's a person who likes the game and knows about the game. Right. <laughs> um, here's, you know, you want to know how good you are, uh, we will figure it out, and otherwise you're going to have no idea. Um And, um, you know, you didn't do that. You didn't have anything. Uh, local go clubs 
right. served the same function in a locally limited way if they could get, you know, interested members and um, if they could get uh, materials. Exactly. And if they could get people to come back over and over again. Um, so let's talk about, I guess, what you've seen, how, how things maybe have changed since, I guess, you've started. And since, mm -hmm. since I guess, we both have started. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely, the internet has definitely helped a lot about, um, a, lo a lot of, facil facilitate a lot of that. I mean, I would see a lot of people now where um, sometimes their ex only exposure towards Go has been the internet. Mm -hmm. And um, other people, they can find out about it. I mean... Yeah. It used to I mean, be, if you wanted to know about Go, you you had to know. Um, it now, if you go online, you Google about it, and you might be yeah. able to find a club nearby. Um, uh, I know it, AGA yeah. has helped some of it, so uh, it yeah, yeah. And it, it, it's it's more amazing than that. It, you can take off on a long airplane flight with an iPad, never having heard of the game, right? Learn it and be playing against people in flight. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's an odd, uh, an odd world. Uh, it helps and it hurts. It mostly helps. Um, right. I think 10 times as much go easily, maybe it's a hundred times as much go is being played in America now, uh, as before the internet. Right. Um, just, it, it has to be, uh, and, um, the Go is also, I think, probably better. Uh, that is, there's more people who know how to play well. Mm, I see. They play on the internet. I had a very interesting experience two years ago. Uh, you know, we had a, a Bob Gilman uh, put together a group to visit Cuba. Yes. Uh, when when the when the licensing was still semi strict, uh, you know, Obama had loosened it up a bit and made it so that if you filled out the forms, you would, you know, you would get the license for a people to people or cultural trip. Right. Um, but you still needed to have the, um, the, the license papers. Uh, and so we did a, a, a tournament and friendship visit with the Academia Cubana de Go. Mm -hmm. Um, and they have a very healthy Go community there with, um, you know, easily 500 active players. Which is a lot. Five hundred. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, uh, a um, a country of uh, eleven million people. That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they they lack money and a lot of travel opportunities. Um, the 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 academia has been uh, helped a lot and encouraged by um, uh, Japanese expats in Cuba, uh... businessmen and diplomats, and they get visits from the Nihonkiin. Uh, Shige no Yuki uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, has been there, um, and um, and they have a few books. They don't have internet access, mm. and I was beating players I shouldn't have been able to beat. <laughs> you know, I, well, I I took up the game at forty and got to one done by you know before I was fifty. Um, so you know, a a solid. 20 or 25 year old player who plays a lot and studies a lot mm -hmm. um, uh, should be beating me. And my feeling when I was playing them and the moves they were making was that they were, they were thinking better and had the potential to be better player. Than mm -hmm. they sh these were people who in America would be beating me. Right. I see. And my, my guess is that the reason they weren't is they don't play on the internet. Oh, I see what you mean. So they play each other a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and they... Yeah, they play each other a lot. And they are um, not tested. And they're not fast in the way that players who play on the internet a lot are. I see. Um, you know, so even... Um, after you spend a couple of years playing anywhere from one to five games a day on the internet, 
mm-hmm. may not be getting better because you're not studying right and reviewing your games right and learning new things. Mm-hmm. Um, but you've seen a lot of stuff go by, and you're tough and you're resourceful, and you make some quick decisions. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I think internet play has made people stronger players. Right. Uh, which I would not have felt I could say before before that visit. Yeah, like, this is this is odd um, that they're not clobbering me, um, <laughs> and I think I I suspect they're going to have plenty of internet there very soon. Yes, um, and I suspect when that happens, there's going to be no turning them back. With players, I think that's be great. definitely yeah. The internet. I mean, if you play in your own. Uh, in your own club or something, you're only going to see the same five people, mm-hmm. the same five playing styles. And definitely when you play online, yeah, you'll start to get a whole slew of different types of playing styles. So it, it definitely does change a lot about maybe how you see the game yeah. and like and how, what you can or can't do. Uh, uh, um, you, if, if you see a, uh, an odd or innovative or, you know, off, Beat move something that you're not used to. Speaking of, <laughs> oh, <I see. laughs> go ahead though. Anti-social move you just made there. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, um, uh, if you um, see a move like that, mm-hmm. uh, the experience of where did that come from and what am I going to do about it is something you have experienced a thousand times before. Right. So you're just like, okay, what do I do? <laughs> uh, you know, you, you just handle it. it yeah. You may lose. <laughs> right. But you're not going to put a lot of time into uh, the, you know, the, the mental response to a challenge. Um, you're going to put it into actually thinking how to handle the challenge. Cool, cool. Anyway, so that, that, was, that was a little bit my, my feeling about that. And I, so I think the in- internet has probably made Go, um, you know, the, the general level stronger. Mm, yes. Haru was obviously a big change as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other change is that there is um, a lot more assistance coming from, uh, from Asia in, in a lot of different forms. Now, yeah, I remember, I mean, back when I started, the big thing was the, the Ing, the Ing grant, which has yes. definitely, I know the, because I'm part of the Dallas Go Club, and the Dallas right. Go Club, we have so many Ing boards and stones, and yes. it, I know that they've helped out a lot, but I know that it's starting to increase just uh, even more so, even with like the Korean foundations, and yes, so um, uh, the, you know, the, the longest history of help to go around the world, uh, uh, obviously, was the Nihon Kiin. Um, okay. And they are still uh, helping uh, a lot and doing a lot of things. Um, we now have a, a, a fund in North America, the Iwamoto Foundation, mm-hmm. um, which is, uh, you know, a U.S. Uh, nonprofit uh, devoted to, uh, you know, go in North America. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, so, uh, you know, Japan uh, is still uh, doing uh, amazing things for us. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Ing Foundation, the Ing Foundation grant um, uh, was a huge uh, boost in the amount of activity. Um, That period... um, was sort of coming to a close when I got involved in AGA organizing. So I don't know a tremendous amount about it, mm-hmm. but uh, I've been told that the, um, uh, the the quantity and quality of youth go was hugely different at the end of the, uh, the in-grant period. Uh, and um, that a lot of our strong young players um, learned during those years um, and, and had more chances to... Uh, um, you know, to, to play, to travel, to um, uh, to be part of the go scene. I don't. I know. And, I definitely uh, helped out from it because uh, one of the re- reasons I first went to play go, um, mm-hmm. they had the go congress, and then the the ing helped out. If you were mm-hmm. a child, they would actually help uh, make make your uh, 
your admission into the Go Congress, uh, I think, free. Yeah. It definitely, being able to do that and seeing such a wide range of Go, it really opened up my world into wanting to play and, and do this a lot more. And mm -hmm. so I'm definitely one of the few people that, that like, well, not few people, but one of the many people that was yeah. affected by them choosing, hey, we're going to, you know, help out a lot of the youth. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was a, a tremendous change. Uh, so, um, uh, Hikaru, the Ying Foundation, and, um, and, and the Internet. Uh, so, uh, Nihonki and, and uh, Ying Foundation. And as you point out, the Ying Foundation um, is uh, um, getting involved again in North American Go in, in a wonderful way, uh, backing uh, you know, the, the university uh, students' organization. Um, having uh, Go festivals um, uh, organized. Um, uh, they've done two of them now on the East Coast. We just had the Changchi Cup in Cambridge. Yes. Um, yes. Where a semifinal of a major Chinese tournament, the Changchi Cup, was played in Cambridge right. with a really uh, fun, well organized, and generously funded um, uh, amateur tournament to go along with it. And um, between uh, players and uh, other attendees who came for, you know, uh, simul's commentary and just, you know, the, the fun of the, the group. Right. Uh, we had uh, well over uh, 200 people in attendance, um, which is, you know, a huge event for us. Um, so uh, the, the Ying Foundation is, is uh, uh, still part of and an increasing part of the North American Go scene. Um, and as you point out, uh, Korea and um, uh, uh, Korea has uh, helped a tremendous amount. Uh, they have sent a number of players, um, um, uh, most notably Myungwon Kim, Mang Don, my fellow Angelino, uh, who helped us uh, start our uh, professional certification and system, uh, and has been working on education projects, uh, and is you know. Uh, completely devoted to the to the project here. Um, that's been a, a huge change. Uh, we are um, getting an increasing number of offers of help from China and Chinese uh, people and, and entities. Uh, so that's going to be a, a, a very good uh, thing in the coming years. Um, we also have more so than 20 years ago. And again, this is a change I'm not, um, I don't have the details at hand because it took place a little bit before I was paying attention to it. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have um, um, a whole bunch of emigre pros, uh, most of them from, from China. Yes. Uh, have been very actively teaching. Um, I know you're the student of one of the more uh, recent yes. arrivals, Jenny Shen, uh, yes. who is one of my favorite people in the Go world. Uh, but uh, for, for many years now, we have had um, some very hardworking teachers. Uh, Yang Yilun, who's my teacher, mm. uh, uh, Feng Yun, uh, and uh, Ming Zhu Zhang, yes. uh, and uh, a bunch of others, uh, Yang Huiren and uh, Shirley Lin and I'm sure I'm leaving some out. Um, they are, uh, um, you know, they... They are definitely, like, sort of planting the seeds and making it a lot better. Right. In terms of, like... Tending the whole farm, in a way. Uh, they have um, uh, really helped the development of a huge number of um, very devoted and uh, strong players. Mm -hmm. uh, so they have been building the Go world here, uh, no end. So those are some of the things that have changed over the last 20 years. Um, so I, a, a thing I want to talk about, um, there's, you talked about so many different things I want to touch on, but I guess the, one of the first few things is like maybe, um, how the AGA, one or two things that you've seen that the AGA has done. I, I, I'd be really curious to know, like, maybe one or two things you can point to that says, uh, like, like this mm -hmm. is something that the AGA's really helped. Uh, I mean, I know the, the, pro, the pro tournament is one, but maybe right. something locally or something that you can... Well, the, 
Yeah, the, 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 the pro tournament thing uh, that we've been doing um, is, I think, has, you know, a, a, a tremendous potential, but we are not done yet. Yes. Um, you know, we, we have been trying and the, the, it's hard to get sponsorship with a small go world. And mm. so um, we're not done yet with that. There's, there's more to do and we're keeping working at it um, uh, to get more uh, tournaments and events for uh, the, 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 new, the new pros to uh, be involved in. Right. Um, the things that the AGA has done um, and, uh, you know, that are, if you like, not done and finished, but done and have, have succeeded. Um, two that come right to mind uh, and are sort of obvious, but you can lose track of the fact. One is the Go Congress and the other is the E-Journal. Mm. Um, and uh, it's interesting to me that, you know, the E-Journal is the outgrowth of the old journal. Right. Um, but it has adapted very well and rapidly to um, the changes of the electronic world and still serves as very much a clearinghouse for Go News outside Asia. That is true. I never thought of that. Um, and it is, you know, uh, it, it's something that is used for a lot of purposes. And I think outside Asia is the main, yeah, the main clearinghouse. Um, which is very good for the whole Go community uh, and very good for the AGA and the Go players here. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's a, that's a thing that has, that has Im impressed me as we have, um, you know, and that's been while you and I have been playing Definitely. that the, um, that the, uh, the journal has uh, switched from being a paper publication to being um, a, an online uh, publication. Um yes. It is not website dependent. You know, it has a, a, a push aspect to its distribution that I think helps a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the, you know, aside from the, the, the portion of the e-journal that is the, um, you know, an electronic mail journal, um, it is also news on a website and has also become broadcasts on different web servers, you know, uh, right. KBS and PandaNet and such, and now has become a uh, YouTube um, uh, distribution, uh, right. with yeah. our YouTube channel, and um, had both a lot of fun and a lot of success with uh, doing the live streaming commentary of games at the last Go Congress. Yeah. Definitely. So our communications thing, you know, one of the things is if you, if if the world doesn't need you because there are for uh, um, just basic information about Go mm -hmm. or to be able to play a game, right? Um, what is the, the the meaning of your organization and the uh, okay. the, the things the, the three basic categories in my mind uh, are uh, um, uh, I suppose you could call them community aspiration and promotion. Mm, okay. So, inward, upward, and outward. <laughs> um, uh, and the, the 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 community thing, both communications with you know the e-journal where we learn what we're each of us doing in the game and where to play and when the events are coming up, um, but also the Go Congress. Uh, right. People like coming to the Go Congress. Once someone has come, they tend to want to come again. Yes. <laughs> um, and it is, it's a difficult event to attend. Yes. Just, you know, it's, it's inexpensive for what it is, but it's expensive just in an absolute sense. Right. Um, you know, to take a week off work. All right. Include both weekends when you add up the travel time mm -hmm. and spend that amount of money to go do go for a week, that's a big cost and a big commitment. Right. And um, that we can get 500 people to do it in a year. Uh, it says a lot. <laughs> it says a lot. And um, when you're at a Go Congress, there is definitely a sense of community and it's a pretty good sense. It's an upbeat, friendly community. Uh, yeah. You know, we have our arguments from time to time. But mostly people like being there and like seeing friends and making friends. 
Yeah, I always like to and, say that the first Go Congress is nice, yeah. but the second Go Congress is even better because it's yeah. everyone that you met the first time, and yeah. you can compare, contrast your notes and how you've and how you've done over the year. You know, there there are different activities in life, uh, and they have have different crowds. Um, and uh, I have to say, one of the things I enjoy about Go, and it's not the game itself. Mm. I mean, I, I enjoy that too a lot. But, uh, <laughs> yes. What I mean is, uh, there's something about it that isn't necessarily Go related that I love, which is that uh, there are people involved from all over the world. Yes. And uh, the community. If you play face to face Go and come to tournaments or congresses or events, you know, the European Go Congress or the US Go Congress. Um, uh, there's a community there from all over, and I now have friends, close friends, um, and I'm, I before go, I was a well-traveled person. Mm. Um, I have friends in more countries than you can imagine, um, <laughs> and some really good friends. Yes, and uh, some real reasons to you know resume studying languages and to go on on trips to places, um, and that's just magic. Uh, it I love that. Uh, and it, and it's not just your. It's not just that I have you know Japanese, Chinese, and Korean friends. There's people I know in Germany now. Uh, yes. And 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 England, who I never would have met, and uh, and some from Russia. Um, and it's because you know there's an international community, and we we share the game. Yes. Um, so keeping Congress healthy and going and fun mm -hmm. um, is an important thing we do, and not easy. Um, Definitely. Yeah, I think some people who attend Congress have a sense of how much work and how you know, <laughs> how difficult it is. Yes, <laughs> uh, and I, you know, I'm not saying uh, I'm not attributing that to myself. Uh, there's a oh. different, you know, there are people who do this some of the stuff every year, uh, and there are uh, there's a local team and you know some some new people volunteering every year um, who do most of the work and take most of the responsibility. Right. Um, so yes president of the organization, but the Congress director in Minnesota, in the Congress we just had, uh, Josh Larson, he was on duty. I mean, he was working on it a year and then was on more than a year and was on duty. Um, all week. Every minute of all week. Yes. <laughs> all, all week is one thing. You can work all week, but it's different when you're working every minute all yes. week. Yes, he went home and slept and, you know, <laughs> okay. Stopped and had a coffee, but he was working the entire time, and stuff comes up. Yeah, uh, and the, when when the time runs out, the smallest things, uh, um, and the, you know, as the as the Congress goes on, the questions start, and they're they're usually the same questions mm. over and over again. Um, they're often slightly unanswerable. <laughs> I, the, the, the most common one is, "Can I buy a banquet ticket?" And I urge your viewers, uh, all of you who come to the Congress. When you sign up for the Congress, buy a banquet ticket. By the end of the week, you're going to want to go to the banquet. Yes. Whether the food is great or bad, or <laughs> unless you actually have an airplane ticket that's not changeable out of town, right? Buy the banquet ticket beforehand, and don't ask the Congress director during the week if there's. <laughs> okay. That's just. Um, uh, Those are wise words. Yeah. I will. <laughs> uh, and I, I, I hasten to to add it. It's fine if you need to ask. Uh, because it's uh, it's meant for. Oh, I should probably play. Oh no. Um, uh, but um, I liken it to um, for the for the Congress director. It's a little bit like being in a uh, standing out in a field on a farm where they grow lettuce just after a tornado has gone through. <laughs> um, the 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 leaves of lettuce aren't going to hurt you. They're fine. Right. <laughs> but if you're trying to pay attention to something and another lettuce leaf <laughs> <laughs> and you are peeling that one off when another one, it's, that's what it's like. Um, uh, that is extremely it's very, descriptive. It's very rewarding, I think, for the people who do it, but very tiring. Yes. Um, and I, I have not done it yet. Um, I, you know, I, I can't as president. And um, mm, yeah. I, I was about a third the way to... Uh, helping out with uh, with Santa Barbara back in 2011, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, so but I, I'm I'm always um, 
gratified and impressed at the people willing to do that amount of of stuff. Um, and uh, it's a tremendously rewarding thing for the Go community that it's done, um, that we have that event. Um, yes. So that's the, the community side of it. Um, in terms of, of aspiration, uh, there's two things. One is that a lot of people still do regard the face-to-face -face version of the game as um, uh, in some sense, fundamentally different or, um, you know, rewarding in a different way than playing online. And I think um, there is some something to that. Um, I, you know, I consider online go to be go, but uh, it's a different experience when you're playing face to face. Yes. You know, wooden, wooden board um, and stones in your in your hands. Um, and certainly for what I was, one of the reasons I stuck with Go and liked it, which was to challenge myself to do something uh, difficult um, uh, with, you know, the possibility of loss uh, and the possibility of winning, um, you know, risk one to enjoy the other. Mm -hmm. uh, having it face to face uh, is a is a different meaning than um, uh, than playing online. Uh, you know, if you play online and 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 it's not you know a game that's for something and you uh, lose, you can treat it uh, as though you were playing you know interactive Tetris. Yes. And and wander away. Um, when you're face to face, you you get competition in a in a in a pretty pure form. Good morning, Will. Hello. I'm sorry. Uh, you're being broadcast. I <laughs> um, hold on one moment. All hey, right. this is Ernie the new, by the way. <laughs> oh, it's a nice dog. <laughs> Hello, Ernie. Okay. Um, uh, Will, do you need something? Got it. Okay. <laughs> Problem solved. My son will. Um, so uh, I I that's the this. that's the the, the 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 aspirational part of it, and also uh, like uh, like the other classic mind games, mm -hmm. um, Go is a thing where you you go deep. Um, it's not like playing uh, Monopoly or um, you know a, a boxed board game from Avalon Hill or a game company or something. It's sub. Um, uh, uh, something where you learn history and principles and openings and tactics, and you can spend your your um, your life doing it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, one of the things the community and the organization should provide is a place for that to uh, um, to happen. Right. Uh, you know, if somebody becomes an expert at um, Monopoly. Right. Um, but if somebody becomes an expert at chess or go, there should be a chess or go world where they can win <laughs> <laughs> and do well and be admired and teach and, um, you know, and enjoy uh, what they have earned. Uh, so that's, that's and, a... take it, and take it further. Uh, and so having, Having the high-end competition, the stuff that I'm not going to be playing in, um, mm -hmm. and don't fully, you know, understand, but uh, having that is 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 a very valuable uh, thing. Um, so that's a good transition. Um, I'd like to talk, I guess, a little bit about uh, us start you starting the uh, or the AGA mm -hmm. rather um, doing the whole. Pro qualification. I mean, right. the genesis of it, um, and then I guess maybe some one or two challenges, maybe that you uh, came across, and then mm -hmm. w w maybe what you're hoping to see out of it in the coming few years. Mm -hmm. Like, um, definitely, when I first heard about it, I was really surprised. I it, it felt maybe like something that was going to happen eventually, but it was cool to see it happened like so so soon. Yes. So. so what was like the initial, 
how was it brought to you in the beginning? Um, it's been an idea that's been around for a long time. Okay. Um, and, you know, a, a part of the uh, genesis of it was simply the fact that we have some very strong young players. Yes. Um, and, uh, and yet, you know, Go isn't standing still in Asia either. Very hard for uh, someone here to go become a pro there. I mean, involves going and living there. Um, very hard to take it further. Uh, and so I think people for a long time have wanted the, the strong players here to be able to take it further and to have a, a, a you know, a go world outside Asia in which that was uh, meaningful. So that was the sort of general uh, genesis. Um, and also there are um, more people and more entities in Asia that want this to happen. Really? Uh, you know, want, want Go to become really big in the West. The, I, I think especially in, uh, in Japan and Korea and increasingly in China, um, people involved in Go want it to be a world game. And um, so there, a lot of them are definitely targeting uh, America. Because yes, I know, I know have a presence, presence in a Europe, a, a yes. fairly large presence, but definitely... Um, the um, so you know America and Europe are the two obvious venues to try to work to make it a, a world game, um, and uh, the uh, proximate cause, if you like, was uh, um, uh, the, the KBA and Myungwon Kim, mm. uh, who came with some real support. Our new pros would be able to play in Korea. Um, uh, if they wanted and, and learn in Korea, and that um, he got us some sponsorship for our first uh, pro tournament. Right. And helped us set it up in a way that was um, uh, uh, sound. Cool. Um, the biggest challenge, uh, plainly, has been getting sponsorship for some tournaments that uh, are not the qualification tournament, but a tournament among pros, both, you know, the, the new pros and the, uh, the, uh, the emigre pros who, who've been teaching us. Right. Uh, um, and, um, you know, it's been a difficult period. That's the biggest challenge, and it still is. Mm -hmm. And we have worked on a number of possibilities, one I hope will pan out soon. Okay. Um, uh, but that's hard. Uh, it's very hard for it to be a, a spectator sport. And uh, a lot of people have noted there isn't the base for it here. It's not, you know, millions of, of players that you could make into a, into a, a world. Right. Um, there's a, there is a chicken and egg problem here. Which do you do first and can you, can you do it? Um, and um, one of the interesting things I found when learning more about it is that the audience, for the most part, doesn't drive a lot of the much bigger sponsorships Go gets in Asia. What drives it is love of the game on the part of people who are in a position to make those sponsorships. Oh. So uh, it's not that a, uh, you know some big company that has um, a desire to get into the you know well-educated game player market right. analyzes it, says there's a lot of Go players, so that's where we need to be. Um, you know, calculates the return on that as opposed to sponsoring motor racing. Right. Decides on Go. No, the chairman loves Go and considers it a huge part of the culture of his country. And I see. Um, one of the things you can do when you are part of a, a giant corporation is uh, culturally rewarding things. Mm. You know, uh, invest in art or opera or... Um, Go. <laughs> Go. And uh, so in that sense, some of those sponsorships are much more about the game. So uh, that's been a challenge, um, a very slow challenge. Um, but that, just a quick, yeah, I remember I've talked with my teacher about this once about, mm -hmm. and I think, first of all, it's really nice that we have and I, somewhere that we've at least set the foundation for someone to um, right. thrive in. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, definitely. But I remember once talking about it, and she said, my teacher said, um, you know, a lot of the people, like, that, like, the parents of pros, or right. in China or something, or a lot of the evangelists, or the strong players, their parents aren't really amazing Go players, but they learned right. it in college, and they really enjoyed it, and they pass it on to their kids, and it's almost yeah. like planting seeds for the next generation. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's I think it's it is really nice and um, it's amazing to see that it, it feels like sometimes a lot of what you're doing now, mm -hmm. while while we are very much worried about what where our place in it like right now mm -hmm. is, it, it's really cool to see like both with like the college cup, yeah, or um or like the uh, things. It's it's a really good way to create a foundation for uh, mm -hmm. where I see like I can definitely see like. Maybe a lot of the people, their kids right now, when they mm -hmm. have kids, they're going to be really benefiting from a lot of this. And it's a very, it's a mm -hmm. far, it's a, you have to look very far out into the future, but it's definitely, mm -hmm. it's really inspiring to see a lot of that. Um. <laughs> Hold on one moment. Okay. Um. All right, let me look at the game here for a sec. Yeah. Are you counting? Um. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> That's the one thing I never do. <laughs> so while you're doing that, let me see. But yeah, the... Seeing what happens with the next generation, but definitely the pro thing is really inspiring. And knowing that for for someone who's starting out, go here to maybe if they said, you know, I see all these Asian pros and they're doing all this, but now I I didn't I never realized oh there's an American pro system and something I can aim for. And I think that's yeah. that's definitely something really cool to see. Um, so that and I think. I, I saw online that the coats had got announced, and I think the fourth pro preliminaries are going to be starting there, which will be really interesting to see how that uh, how that goes. Um, I think the next thing I'd like to talk about, um, let's talk about uh, how the Chang Changchi Cup went. Um, I know you went there, yes, and I know AGA assisted a little bit with it, if not all. Yeah, we, we helped with some of the broadcasting stuff that they did, um, and uh, we helped with. Uh, getting it off the ground to uh, begin with. Uh, I have to say, though, um, the, most of the work was done by the uh, the, the college guys, um, and uh, they did an amazing job. Um, is now just so I know, is that a is that part of the AGA or offshoot of AGA or just completely independent? No, it's a it's an independent organization for college go. I see, um, and. Uh, we work closely with them on everything we can, um, right. but uh, but it's its own organization, um, and um, you know they've done a, a lot of interesting things, uh, and uh, so no, very pleased that they're there. Definitely, I, I mean, in a way, like the Go World is it's really nice, but I mean it's it is small, and we all should definitely try and help each other to try. Yeah, yeah to make something work out really well but it's okay that i mean like my my poor brain is like when i see something i say see american and then go i think oh right. it's all it's all part of the same thing but i didn't you know in, realize. In, in a certainly in a in a functional sense we try to be um right. we work with them all the time um uh having um Yeah, it's uh, it's family. Um, in a similar way, I would say um, uh, you know, in a legal sense, um, AGF is separate from AGA. That's our charitable arm, the American Go Foundation. Mm. Um, was set up by AGA members to you know, take advantage of the charitable deduction. Um, and they have their own board and staff and we do everything together. Um, so I see no reason not to be doing things together with ACGA all the time. Cool. Um, you cut me off. 
Me? <laughs> I think you cut me off here. Oh, in the game. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's... <laughs> no, no, not not in the conversation. My 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 poor little group is cut off. I'm I'm not happy about this. <laughs> you you ponder the the fate of the group. I have to go in the other room for a second, okay. uh, and I will be right back. And we're back. <laughs> but yes, um. I have no idea what to do here. I'm going to try and connect back one way and gain some strength and use it elsewhere. Um, but yeah, the Changchi Cup is definitely something cool. Uh, let's see, we've talked about Changchi Cup, the Pro, um, AGA. I guess let's so okay. let's talk about like maybe a hobbyist perspective of Go because definitely mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking. I think we touched on you touched on this a little bit a second ago with. Um, mm -hmm how maybe like a, someone else's opinion of, oh, I play Go is different than, in, in like an Asian uh, population would, might be different than um, how, how it is and things. And definitely, um, I think that it's an interesting thing to think about and uh, talk about when we uh, approach some of this. Um, mm -hmm. And I think, so I think going into it, um, what what would your what would you say your aspirations are in terms of maybe playing go or uh getting stronger within go um i want to continue playing uh i would like um to uh um let me think about that cuz i i think about it once in a while um right uh, and it's not an, an easy question. I'm plainly not going to be a staggeringly good player. Um, no, don't say that. I mean, it's oh, some of that's like, you know, hard work that you'd like to yeah. put into it. Um, I would like, I, I suppose I would like to do two things. One is to, you know, raise my rank a bunch. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I'm, I'm not done with that as an aspiration yet. You know, we can't, continue to do that all through life mm -hmm. but i'm not sure i'm i'm done yet right um and that may mean learning it differently but i have another uh aspiration uh that is related to that um a bit uh which is i think um there are some things about learning go that um we don't know, including our strong players and our teachers. Mm. Um, and some methods, you know, the, the, the methods used to be, uh, you know, teaching methods used to be mostly about taking little kids and making them good. Right. And then a second set of teaching methods has been developed a little bit mm -hmm. for the, the amateur world. Yes. Um, but I don't think either is optimal yet. Mm. Um, there's a lot of, been a lot of change uh, when, you, when you speak to professionals about, you know, how strong players are now compared to how strong they used to be, for example. Right. There's a lot of change um, in how players are taught even at the best level. Really? I've never heard this. this yes. Pretty interesting. Uh, in if you go back a while, um, a lot of the teaching was devoted to uh, openings. Right. And it is not now. Right. Uh, a lot of middle game fighting is definitely <laughs> more middle game fighting in the you know, and a lot of life and death. Mm hmm. Um. The the. The, the, the balance between those possible areas of emphasis has changed. Yes. And that has changed how strong the players are, I'm told. Again, I can't assess this right. directly myself because I don't know. Um, well, that kind of change it, happening a bit too quickly. Mm hmm to say that our old methods, their old methods of teaching were, uh, you know, close to the best. Right. Um, and the part I'm interested in is the stuff that is more efficient for poor 
players and adult players yes. and players who don't have a lot of time. Um, um, so the ones who are not going to be studying every day. And, and this is informed a little bit by the experience of Go Congress, where, you know, there, Maida has his lecture on, on the crosscut. Right. And he has a room full of people watching the lecture. And it's really great. And they all understand what he's saying. Right. They can see it. They can read it out. And next year, they come back. And they might go to the same lecture again because they've forgotten it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, we have not. Um, there isn't um, uh, a, a, a conscious or intentional form of memory mm. that we do in Go. In right. fact, we use brute force. Um, you know, we make our arms strong with push-ups. Right. So we do more push-ups longer. Right. And with arms, that's what you have to do. Right. Um, uh, it is not the case in a lot of other fields of expertise that have a lot of information and memory. It's not the case um, that you just use brute force. Interesting. And kind of is in go that is true it I'm, is it is I'm a very sure, ancient... right that there is some method um but there are a lot of little things along the way that suggest there may be some and some of the th some of the methods you can use for teaching and remembering are really very simplistic right um, most people by the time they are uh high single digit q players one or two q mm -hmm. um are very competent in handling monkey jumps and crane's nest positions. Mm -hmm. And yet there's other Tesuji type situations right. that they're not as strong at and don't remember what the, what the details are. Mm -hmm. It could be that one of the reasons they remember monkey jumps and crane's nests pretty well mm -hmm is the name. Okay, so this is an interesting line because I, I get taught in Chinese uh -huh. and a lot of the times, both because I've done translation duties for uh -huh. uh, the Go Congress, but also just in general, if I'm trying to understand it, I, I might write notes to myself in English uh -huh. and she will, my teacher will say something in Chinese uh -huh. and it's a very precise way of saying it. It's like they have an exact word. It's almost like the right. the fabled Eskimos, like however many words for snow that they have. Right. Um, and they say, how do you do this in English? And mm -hmm. I say, there is no word. And she tells me, well, figure out a word. It's like, I can't just make up words like that. <laughs> and I think maybe... You can. <laughs> could. Yes, I, I could just come up with <laughs> my whole yes. new English. But the, it is... The smelly underarm move. Yes. <laughs> But that is an interesting thing. I've never heard of it described that way, that, you know, some of the mnemonics maybe may yeah. have affected how we uh, remember a lot of these things. Yeah, I guess what, I, what I'm wondering is, is there uh, a potentially effective mnemonic method for Go? And if so, what is it? And maybe there isn't. I mean, because, for example, a life and death positions, one of the reasons you do life and death over and over again, I've been told many times by strong players, is so that during a game, you know the results of the reading of the simpler positions so you can read the complex things. Right. Um, so it is a form of memorization. Uh, but maybe it's not memorization in the sense of knowledge. It's memorization in the sense of a, a thinking process. Muscle right. memory, almost. Right. And you have to do it by repetition. You can't memorize it using a trick and expect to read using that information. And I don't know the answer to that. But um, that's one of the, uh, if you like, purely with regard to the game, um, uh, I would say I have two aspirations to play just a bit better right. and to um, figure out if there is... Uh, um, a useful and simple, you know, mnemonic method mm -hmm. that enables you to be stronger in Go um, with less uh, mental, mental anguish. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
and you know, I, it is, there is, uh, there, there's a backstory in another hobby of mine, um, uh, which was a thing I liked, but it wasn't a hobby until about four years ago, mm -hmm. um, which is memorizing things. Uh, I quite enjoyed reading a book, uh, Moonwalking with Einstein. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Pardon my hesitation, but I'm looking at that group you read. You don't know how to cut me off, do you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm very proud of, well, until you actually cut me off, if you, got, if you do, I'm, so far I'm very proud of how this looks. <laughs> hmm. But yeah, there are interesting things about Go. Um, well, some of them, I think, because my teacher, when she's taught me, she said, you know, some of this just learn this and we'll worry about the actual reason. Like, yes. it'll come with you in time. I think that it's, a, it's I've, I've heard that said many of times. Oh, hello. <laughs> <Hi. So. laughs> I don't think it's really a great move or anything, but there you are. Uh, well, I'm going to cut you for sure. Um, uh, and, but definitely I've, since then, I, sometimes I will sit down and try and think about, okay, there has to be an underlying reason. And sometimes I've found it, other times I haven't. Um, some things like, uh, and I've, I've sort of figured it out. And I, I also, I guess, in a way, in, in the same aspiration that you do, I have this, it would be really interesting to be able to find this, like some... Mm -hmm some underlying found thing that you could say it might take a while, but at least if you wanted to know the quick answer, here's why you mm -hmm. play the moves that you do. Yeah. And um, definitely like thickness and strength and living in death, uh, dead groups. Mm -hmm. I've, I've seen a relation between the two to where, uh, why you would want to play away from thickness. Why, if your group's already alive, Mm -hmm. your thickness you don't want to make territory and um it it's something that i feel like yeah definitely uh the learning process is still very much in the way that and obviously it might not be true but mm -hmm. uh you know the the same way that learning styles just in general for like america or just mm -hmm. our educational system has to change in conjunction with like uh, how technology changes or something, but I feel like Go learning can also change in based on you know who's learning it and how mm -hmm. and you know what you want to do with it. I think being able to do that would be really really cool. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I definitely understand where you're coming from, and it's one of those things that if you see a nugget of truth in there and you explain it to someone and it, and they see it too. It's it's a it's a really wonderful eureka moment. Mm -hmm. See people really get something out of it. Um, we have hit about an hour. Um, okay. I don't know what your schedule is. Um, if you want to, I can keep going a little bit. Okay. I the, if you want to. I think. Uh, we focus on the game, or um... well, what we can do. Um, we can we can do we can finish the game um, mm -hmm. for sure. I think what we can do is uh, we can wrap it up. We we can wrap up the conversation here and the recording mm -hmm. here, and then I'll talk about how the game went afterwards, uh, just as a second okay. thing. Um, so I think let's do that. <laughs> I I'm probably not going to even cut this random talking out about it, but mm -hmm. um, so. Like, let's say closing remarks. Um, let's say people that are watching this, or if you want, mm -hmm. if you want to tell the viewers here something about uh, something about Go or something, or the AGA or some advice. Um, do you have any anything that you'd like to say to our uh, the viewers of this? Um. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Other than buying your banquet ticket ahead of time. Other than buy your banquet ticket. Yes. Uh, something that's almost as prosaic as buy your banquet ticket um, uh, is uh, that um, uh, 
you know, we've put a lot of effort for many years now into things for strong players, and, you know, foreign tournaments and, 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 and big stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and because of the internet, the bad side of the internet is a lot of local clubs closed. Uh, yes. Some in immigrant communities and some in other places. They, the meaning of local club, like the meaning of the AGA, is different than it was. Um, and uh, so we have been trying to uh, put some life back into local clubs. And you know, one of the things going to the Changchi Cup underlined, I think, for a lot of people is that um, you know the, the the current Boston experience. Mm. Um, the uh, it's perfectly possible to have a really strong local face-to-face -face go community. It's really good, you know, it's a lot of fun for everybody. Uh, it's really good for the go community generally. Uh, and it's something uh, we should do as much as we can. Um, and um, at the AGA, we want to support it as much as we can. Uh, we have our chapter rewards program Mm -hmm. um, and uh, are going to make use of that to, you know, offer a little bit of money to clubs that want to duplicate a little bit what they've done in Boston using the meetup service as a way of um, uh, uh, getting people to attend locally a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but we're very open to ideas uh, for how it is that the very best or most active local clubs uh, work. Right. And um, we want um, so we want to hear from people. If you want to start a local club, we want to support you however we can. Um, and uh, so don't be afraid to start a club yes. uh, and don't be afraid to ask us and other club folks for, uh, you know, uh, tips and how to do it. Um, and we'll try to help. Definitely. I think that's really good. I, I, we've, it, it's a whole nother talk. Cause I think, I think I, I talked to you about this at go Congress, like mm -hmm. what you thought was a, an important part of, um, sort of having a go club and, um, mm -hmm. And without going too far into it, uh, your 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 response was really interesting, which was have something other than just go to really get people to keep coming. But hmm. and but what, I think what did I say? I think you said that you <laughs> trying to remember. <laughs> uh, you said that you had your go your go club met at a uh, coffee shop, which made it right. really interesting that if you went there, yeah. um, the atmosphere was still something that you'd be enjoying even without playing go. Right. Um, and definitely, I've I've heard a yeah. lot of really interesting advice. Um, mm -hmm. a, a more in depth thing would probably require another conversation, which I would love to do with you. Again. Okay, thank you again for doing this. But um, yeah. uh, it's it definitely clubs right now. I think are the the ability to have something locally is really important, and I, that, that's that would be really cool to see. You know. Mm -hmm. have more people be willing to do these things and stuff like that because even at our club um people will suddenly say um i you know one of the reasons actually i want to get stronger is so when people strong people co show to our club they have a reason to keep coming back because they mm -hmm. have a strong player to play if they only play uh, a lot of weaker players they might not find it interesting because they can just go online and play but mm -hmm. if there's that one guy at that club they can't beat then mm -hmm. they're like i gotta go back and beat him <laughs> and it's uh, for me that was one of the motivating factors for me getting stronger. But um, definitely, I agree with you. We we should definitely uh, do a stronger push for uh, or or have more local clubs and definitely mm -hmm. encourage that. So I think that is a a good and not to be afraid of starting your own club. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's a good uh, way to end this um, for everyone watching. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, we, we will, I will, I'll, I'll post the link to this online to see how, if you want to see who, who made who cry in this game. Uh, I, there are a lot of things happened in this game that I already want to cry <laughs> about for me. <laughs> um, but 
as always, I want to thank uh, Andy. Uh, thank you very, very much for doing this. And if you want to come back and mm -hmm. uh, do another talk, maybe about Go Clubs or mm -hmm. something else, uh, you are more than welcome to come back. And um, we will, and eventually when this comes up, there will be a point five talking about the mistakes. I'll be going over it with my teacher, and that'll be fun. <laughs> And she will have wonderful things to say about both of us, I'm sure. Yeah. This may be one of those games that neither of us won. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so thank you, and uh, bye, everybody. Uh, say bye, Andrew. Bye-bye.